Okay, so it's uh, my pleasure to introduce the next speaker uh, who came yesterday from uh, Bogota, Colombia. And uh, so his name is Francisco Salazar, and he is a data driven investment professional who combines traditional financial analysis with advanced quantitative methods and ESG considerations, showcasing a forward looking investment management style. Specializing in Latin American markets, he focuses on quantitative research, algorithmic trading, and AI driven asset management. Francisco has earned the certificate in quantitative finance charter, completed the Python Quant CPF program in Python for algorithmic trading, and holds the CFA Institute certificate in ESG investments. Yes. Right. Hello, everyone. Just a quick note. So, um, I provided the link because the lightning stuff that this lightning talk is based on a comprehensive report which is hosted on GitHub. So, if you want access or take a deeper look at the project, if that is the address or the link to the repository. So, so that's what we did this time. Um, the presentation today is about uh, quantitative investing strategy. Basically, we look at risk premium and algorithmic trading. The idea here is to present um, strategy based on machine learning and AI, how to integrate that into the workflow process if you are going to design the trading investment strategies. So we're going to look at certain investment strategies such as uh, based on models like support of the machine. Uh, also, we're going to have uh, more like related to this one here. So it's logistic regression, diffusion trees, random forest. And basically, what we're going to do is to explore how these investment strategies uh, go over a long period of time. So, with this short introduction, let me just go to uh, the methodology overview, which is very short. So, basically, what you see here is like uh, the milestone during this project that we completed. Basically, what we are going to have the sense of the predictive power of this AI algorithm to forecast in advance. So, first, the data source. The, 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 it's a CSV file which contains 10 years of data, basically end of day data. It goes from January 2014 to December 2023. The assets that are contained in that uh, data source are a mix of selection of financial and tech stocks such as Apple, Microsoft, Intel, Amazon, Goldman Sachs. We also we have indexes like the SPX and the VIX. We have also the SPY. We have uh, FX with the euro. We have XEU, which is a proxy for gold spot price. We have GDX, which is a, a proxy for gold miner and geo. Um, regarding data preparation and feature engineering, well, basically, what we'll have is we'll focus on the prediction price direction of the SPY. And in order to get to, to, to do that, well, basically, we first calculate the related returns because of their properties as additive time, but also because uh, in terms of comparison of asset returns, it's more stable when you have large fluctuations of prices. Then we move on to, uh, we also add to the features, uh, lag features, momentum indicators, Bollinger bands, simple moving averages, and rolling volatilities in order to bolster our modeling predictive capabilities. We then move to the pre-processing steps. So here, this is critical because basically what we do is to split the data set in a training data set and a test set, so it's 70% training data set and 30% uh, data set. Test set, sorry. And basically, what we're going to do is um, normalize our feature scale using min max color because we want to avoid data leakage and we want to preserve the integrity of our uh, test environment. This is approach, uh, basically, the prediction problem is approach as a binary classification problem. What we actually do is uh, distinguish downward and upward movements. And it's basically it's the best way to approach uh, predictive trading strategies. Uh, then we have a model selection and training. So basically what we do here is we select a number of different non-linear non and linear um, algorithms to the task we're gonna, we're gonna handle here. And finally, regarding feature selection and importance, we derive our uh, feature importance using entropy classifier. So we have an example here of how would be the importance of the features we selected for the prediction exercise. And we also select user select tables for uh, let's say statistical analysis. Finally, what we are going to do is to backtest our strategies. We are going to compare them against the benchmark here, the SPY, which is in the ETF, 
and we are going to have some models that have long and short strategies. Okay. Into this, so basically here we have the back testing of our algorithm tra trading strategies. Here, what I wanted to show you is how you can visualize this back testing in a simple manner. So you have here the equity curve for some of these models that we are studying here, and you have also a model with stats regarding the performance of these algorithms. So what you can see here basically is that we have from the, those 10 year period that we used to uh, do the prediction exercise, we're gonna have a period from 2021 to 2023, where we are going to assess the back testing of the strategies. So rather than dive into each of the performance for the total return for each of the strategies, I chose you, I chose which ones were the best ones. And for example, just to give you a visual example of what could be a wrong uh, strategy would be like the logistic regression. So if you look at here, the, there is a community returns. When you compare the curve here to what the, actually the model did, this red bit shows us that it's underperforming the market clearly. But if you look, for example, at precision tree classifier, or for example, the random forest, you'll see that, for example, the total return was 42%, and the performance of the benchmark is 26%, so almost the double. In addition, if you look around for random forests, you have a 62% performance compared to 26 performance of the spa, right? So the other model, which is really attractive regarding the numbers, is the MOP classifier, which is the multilayer perception. Why? Well, it has a very, it's slightly better than the, the performance of the benchmark, but it has a max drawdown, which is the lowest one when compared with the rest of the models. And it has the profit factor of infinity, which is quite interesting. So what should be actually the pattern that emerged from watching and comparing all these models and all these uh, performance is that somehow you look at the period we've been mentioning in previous talks is that you have a period from January 22 to January 2023, and you see the drawdown. So if you look at the chart, um, yeah, all the models, at least five out of seven models struggle to uh, have positive returns, which is some, somehow striking because um, if you look at it from a cumulative return comparison, the only basically models that are outperforming the benchmark, which is the one in black line, are uh, the one I mentioned before, decision tree, random forest, and also the not be classified. So what you can actually conclude is that somehow traditional algorithms like logistic regression are not able to perform well. But when you have this like you know, more evolved models, you are able to have a better prediction regarding um, the performance of the spike. But remember, this is focused on the performance of the direction of the movement of the spike ETF. All right. Okay, so yeah, so this is when you want to compare all the stats, the module that you use when you use, a, for example, vector BT, which is the backtesting package we use, allows you to compare the core uh, performance for all the, the models. Okay, yeah, give you all the total trades and total fees. So basically, give you a good approach of how you can get uh, an assessment of the strategy when using, for example, these different models. And well, the conclusion and implication basically, what we have here is that uh, when you have to consider how you're going to select the right machine learning, and this is what you, I would like you to take home from this presentation is that you will have to think about the model calibration. So you have to choose the right machine learning, but what you actually have to think about is the data set you're dealing with rather than the model and the task you're doing, you're having time. Then you have to balance the model fees and flexibility. So you should you should be careful with one important topic, which is the variance bias trade-off, where we're into minimizing sample errors without inflating out the sample instability. This is very important because it will ensure our models are robust and not to apply cut recommendations. And basically, uh, the last one, which is selective complexity, is very vital to adjust the complexity of our models. Um, we see the middle ground, where basically we, our models are sophisticated enough to capture market intricacy, but not so complex mm -hmm. that they become unstable and overly fitted to historical data. And finally, rather than come here and explain you about performance of each model or choose or present a ranking of, I, I would rather 
tell you to focus on more like ensemble methods, which is like how you can aggregate different models to improve the performance of your predictive models in the future. Finally, if we want to look to, for further directions, uh, we do explore deep learning models and more evolved models, such as on short-term uh, memory neural networks, which use TensorFlow Python. Also, we can have uh, the inclusion and in-depth analysis of more labels. Also, the exploration of reinforcement learning, which if, I'm sure we're going to be exploring more depth. Uh, also, we could include big data because we can introduce alternative data. Uh, finally, we also have uh, further back testing to understand the historical performance because what I showed you here is never fee, so it's not including any transaction cost or slippage. This might be, you know, like providing you, if you think about it, looking at decision tree as far, there is a lot of traits done. So maybe this will, you know, dive into your performance because you'll have to pay for those transaction costs. And finally, this is a, a note uh, that. Then you can expand it when you look at the document on GitHub. It's basically that we are so focused on the explanatory power of those models that we are forgetting something which is very important, which is the causality of the data we are using. So if we can explore the causal uh, factors that have in the data, you can have a better explanation of what's happening in terms of predictions. And with that, yes. Any questions? I did have one question. Do you have any familiarity with some of the time series work out of models? Like uh, they're they're in the deep learning side of it, but like TS mixer. I know that if your your multi level perception perceptron was actually your highest performance there, I'm pretty sure TS mixer is like it could be yeah yeah that's like an upgraded version of more yeah. of the deep learning. Space. But but also rather yeah. something you could actually bring out. Uh, and think about like we have like this obsession of forecasting returns, mm -hmm. right? Now, when we have like these deep learning models, when you go, I mean, if you want to asset, for example, in terms of asset allocation, you know, when I was deep learning and, and portfolio construction, you don't have to do the, the return distribution stuff. So, somehow, and we need to create this question in so there's a change in how we assess now models and finance and how all this stuff come together. So it's it's rather changing. So maybe all this exercise we're doing here in a couple of three years is not be you know, more relevant. So maybe we'll see it's going to be under the strength. Okay. Oh there's a question so so your strategy or the model has included some potential costs like the BDS spread. Especially no. if you're looking at the thin traded stock. Yeah, here here I didn't do that. But if you if you if you use the the packet which is uh, vector BT, you are able to include, for example, fees or slippage into your calculation, okay. and it will provide you a more realistic picture about your uh, prediction of uh, modeling of your strategy. How about potential tax consequences? So if you get so much signal by cell signal coming from the Mother, then you have a frequent trading is going to happen. Then there's a heavy, heavy cost of a tax consequence. Is that part of the mother or is that something else? Exactly. So basically, what I show you there, when you, when you look at, for example, decision, the decision uh, classifier, right? Decision tree classifier, you'll see he had a, a performance of 42%, right? But from that 42%, you have to extract the cost of transactions and also slippage, for example. So then you will have like a real number that I'm sure wouldn't be that high. Regarding the benchmark. One last question. Yes. Uh, 